For most people, life after high school is one of the first times you get to experience a whole lot of freedom. Up until this point, your days tend to be dictated by parents and a school schedule. Decision making becomes one of the biggest building blocks that you carry throughout your life. Most people opt for furthering their studies, while others venture into other things. Good evening, my name is Zola Shalwana. Welcome to Tuesday edition of Soda Today. Tonight we unpack and dissect the challenges that students face once they make the decision to further their studies, as well as the journey until they wear that gown as a form of reward for the endurance of reaching another milestone. Of course, we cannot have this conversation alone, so joining us in studio is Dr. Sehopa Siroka, who is the technical advisor to the administrator of the Central Johannesburg Tivit College. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much and good evening to the viewers. Now, be before we get into the business of the day, for the viewers at home that don't know what a Tivit College is, what is it? A Tivit College is uh, it's an institution falling under the, the public sector education system. You know, we know we have basic education, we have higher education, and in the middle there, we have TVET uh, college system in South Africa mm -hmm. as part of post-school, you know. Now, now education. let's take it back a bit. And in, in the year 2019, CJC was accused and they were also under investigation for holding criminal activities such as poor governance of the institution, lack of internal control and more. What exactly was going on at that time at the college? Yeah, let me hasten to say that uh, uh, indeed uh, the reason why any institution of government is put under administration is that things are not running smoothly as they should. Policies are flouted, mm -hmm. you know, governance, you know, systems are either compromised or deliberately sometimes, sometimes through ineptitude. Mm -hmm. But then uh, in 2019, before any institution can be put under administration, there's a process that precedes the decision to, put, to send an administrator. And that is an assessor is sent to the institution to assess the situation as it were. And part of the findings were that indeed, just what you've alluded to, you know, flouting of policies and procedures, corruption setting in, and uh, you know, systems compromised, as a result then, the Minister of Higher Education, Dr. Nzimande, then took a decision to send an administrator with specific terms of reference. Mm -hmm. So immediately after the 2019 um, administration, this current administration was, was, was appointed uh, with clear terms of reference, which included, but not limited to, one, to go and set up systems, could be HR systems, could be IT systems. Governance structures must be put in place because when we came in there, there, there was no council. People in executive positions were put uh, on precautionary suspensions through a myriad of other courses. Those cases took their toll. Some are finalized, some not yet finalized. Mm -hmm but we, we get in there. So it, it, it's important that uh, we do understand reasons behind putting an institution under administration. Mm -hmm. Now, we understand that when you put an institution under administration where investigations are happening, obviously learning is being disrupted at that time. The people that were found guilty, what happened to them? You know, were, were, they, were they charged? Yes, like I said. There was consequence management that was put in place. Yeah, some investigations are still continuing. You could be aware that investigations around NSFAS was referred to SIU through a proclamation by the, the president of the country. So there were easier cases that were dealt with, were dealt with, and they are now finalized. But there are those that uh, are not easy to finalize because people have rights. Mm -hmm. You take me through a disciplinary process, say you find me guilty. Mm -hmm. I have recourse to the law. I can make a review application at the labor court, etc. Those are things that can cause delays in finalization of any cases. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Now, let, let's fast forward to 2022. Um, is there any new administrative team that's currently in charge of running the school? And if there isn't, or rather if there is, what, what is different this time? What's different is that uh, the, the administration team of which I'm part uh, was given specific uh, you know, terms of reference, like I alluded in the beginning. Uh, and we worked very hard with the cooperation of all stakeholders in the Department of Higher Education and Training. Uh, we've achieved uh, quite a lot, although not all of them. You know, there will still be those that are hanging. Mm -hmm. But uh, just to give an, an idea, we, we have been able to, set, to, to stabilize the institution in terms of managing relations among all the stakeholders. We've been able to institute or institutionalize hmm. campus management stakeholder you know, committees so that management at, cam at a campus, mm -hmm. management at a campus, unions at that particular campus, and the student governance uh, structure would need to meet regularly to solve problems at a local level before they become crises. Mm -hmm. That's how we tried to, to stabilize that and also to make it the way of doing things at our campuses. Mm -hmm. So that, was, that model was replicated across CGC mm -hmm. uh, so that by the time the administration pulls out, at least the, the culture of the organization is that of consultation is that of taking accountability, mm -hmm. is that of you know, communicating mm -hmm. so that the one hand can know what the other one is doing as they speak. Mm -hmm. We have also looked at HR systems. Instead of working manually, we have introduced, we have migrated mm -hmm. the entire HR from payroll to appointments is now digitalized. So before we came, a person would apply for leave, physically fill in a form, form can get lost, the leave uh, request may not be captured. Mm -hmm. Therefore, employees can always have you know, a huge and manageable leave credit, mm -hmm. which comes in as a financial risk down the line. Mm -hmm. Because people will go and leave effectively without it being you know, mm -hmm. accounted for mm -hmm. on the payroll. Doc, I'll have to interrupt you there because we are running out of time. There's obviously more that I need to ask you about the institution. Yeah. Now, there's still much that we need to talk about, such as the graduation ceremony that wrapped up today and more. For now, let's take a quick break and we will see you right after this. So stay tuned. If you've just tuned in tonight, we are talking about the challenges that students face after they decide to further their studies and what it takes for them to get that qualification. And we are still joined in studio by Dr. Sehoba Seruka, who is the technical advisor at the Central Johannesburg TVET College. Now, Doc, what are some of the challenges that you faced, you know, as the school since the corruption, corruption case? Yeah, uh, like I said earlier, the, the, the corruption cases they are varied. Some are still being investigated, mm -hmm. so, like by the SIU. Mm -hmm. So those will take their toll, and at the right time, results will be out. And those who are found to have been on the wrong side of the law, mm -hmm. let the law take its course. Mm -hmm. Now, so, I, I want before I'm sorry for interrupting you there. I, I also wanted to understand that when it comes to the enrollment of students, because obviously yeah. when that was happening, people are aware of that. You know, especially I mean our age group, people are on social media, so they know what's happening about CJC. So how did that affect you in terms of the number of students that were enrolling into the institutions? Did they not drop? Yeah, uh, uh, not, not much <laughs> in terms of the, 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 the enrollment. Because uh, our enroll the way we manage our enrollment in such a way that uh, we, we, there are targeted uh, enrollment numbers. Mm -hmm. So we didn't see a significant drop in the way we, we, we took students in uh, because the situation was still fluid, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That you wouldn't be able to, to say you cannot enroll because of mm -hmm. the investigation because it's still, you know, under wraps as it were. Because, uh, it's not yet finalized. Mm -hmm. But the numbers, we, not, we were not very negatively affected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
<laughs> so moving to the great news, right? Today was the last day of the seven day graduation. I think it's time for us to smile because on the first segment we spoke about serious stuff. Yeah. How many students graduated? It's about 2,000 oh. in various categories. Mm -hmm. There's a category of certificates, can exit at that level. Mm -hmm. There was national diploma, there was N6 exit level and also national diplomas. So it was a very, you know, auspicious moment to be there seeing young, young people who came in jittery, mm -hmm. now being confident after obtaining their, their qualifications. Mm -hmm. And you can see smiles on, on, mm -hmm. you know, from parents and guardians, mm -hmm. uh, you know, relating, you know, how we do it mm -hmm. the African way. Mm -hmm. You know, the past seven days have been very uh, enjoyable indeed. We've had mm -hmm. two sessions a day from last Monday and uh, up to this morning when mm -hmm. we did our last session. Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great that, you know, the students finally graduated. It's always good to see, you know, someone achieve something that they've always wanted. Now, since the college was under administration, what has it achieved so far? One of the things that we achieved off the cuff, one, uh, we had eight campuses and uh, we've had to make a tough decision to lose one of them because of uh, the state of the, the campus itself mm -hmm. at Crown Mines. Mm -hmm. You remember that Crown Mines is a, it's a mining area. Mm -hmm. So why the campus went there in the first place, it's food for thought. But we engaged geotech experts to look at uh, the condition of the facilities, mm -hmm. the place where it is, its location, etc. So the results came out. They said to us, "This place is not habitable. Mm -hmm. uh, it's risky to, to be to be staying here and, and running uh, programs." So we, through communication with the d department and internal external stakeholders, a decision was taken. You close down this. It's not a conducive environment to be in. Mm -hmm. So we relocated them to one of our campuses that would dovetail with the programs there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one campus along Smith Street, uh, you know, area mm -hmm. around Brownfontein. It's a, yeah, mm -hmm. that's where we relocated them to. Secondly, we reviewed a number of policies. I can count the more than fifty. Mm -hmm. I can't count the number now. We also amended. We also came up with new ones mm -hmm. after detecting policy gaps. So they range HR, IT, you know, marketing, mm -hmm. communication. We revamped all of them. To, you know, when you look at the policy, you need also to look at the legal frameworks and what's happening in that area for the sake of compliance. Mm -hmm. Because if you come up with a policy that's uh, you know, it's incongruent with the dictates of a particular piece of legislation. Mm -hmm. You're trading in dangerous areas. Mm -hmm. So we did that. We migrated, like I said, the entire payroll onto an you know, IT system so that people can apply for leave, people can do whatever, and the land managers with delegated authority can process. Mm -hmm. No pen and paper passes from one hand to the other. We also have done uh, graduations. We've, we've also, uh, you know, appointed people in key executive positions. Mm -hmm. Because when you got in there, like I said, the entire executive management was not there. So we had to advertise, we had to recruit people with, you know, the right skills, right expertise, mm -hmm. so that when we leave, the college can still run. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. one of the risks of any institution under administration is life after administration. Mm, what happens? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we had to, to make sure that we tighten those screws so that the right people, right skill sets, take up those responsibilities. So mm -hmm. that when you look back, we can all be proud of our intervention. Mm -hmm. Now let's, um, let's continue talking about your administration briefly. What are some of the strategies that you've put in place to make sure that you don't experience cases such as corruption? Because I, be I believe corruption was one of the biggest factors you know, that led to the campus being put under 
or rather the institution being put under administration in 2019? Yes. Um, I think one of the strategies we, we, we instituted was governance structures, mm -hmm. your policies, your procedures, training of people to be able to, 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 to perform at the right levels. Let me give you an example. One of the very critical areas in governance, especially financial governance of an institution, mm -hmm. is around procurement. We've had to, 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 to develop a supply chain management policy, train people, establish those committees, as you know, there will be three committees mm -hmm. for any bit to be processed. Mm -hmm. Your specs, your uh, uh, you know, evaluation and your adjudication. Mm -hmm. That is in place. Mm -hmm. The policies in place, people know. Mm -hmm. The second one was to, to ensure that the grant allocated for infrastructure improvement is utilized optimally. Mm -hmm. this, now if, yes, because teaching and learning does not happen in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Those teaching learning spaces must be conducive. I'm proud mm -hmm. to say, by the time we leave, we'll be leaving behind, not completely, but refurbished. Mm -hmm. We also have a board, you know, teaching tools of trade. Lecturers have been bought uh, laptops, mm -hmm. trained on how to use them. So that, you know, remember when you came in, in 2020, mm -hmm. it was, Two weeks after level five of COVID, mm -hmm. alert, uh, you know, level. So we were blending te mm -hmm. teaching, learning from home, you know, how multimodal type mm -hmm. of teaching and learning. Doc, so, I, I might have to disrupt you right yeah. there. If there are more policies or, or there's a lot that you need to tell us, you obviously tell us about, um, rather, after the ad break. Let's take a short breather and after the ad break, we talk about what we can expect from the college moving forward and more. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You are still watching Soda Today and we have reached the last segment of the show. We are still talking about some of the challenges that students encounter in higher institutions. Now, Doc, has the Minister of Higher... Because on the first segment you mentioned that Dr. Blade Zamante intervened, right, on the process of administ um, administration investigating the institution. Um, now, has the Minister of Higher Education, Dr. Blade Zamande, been involved in making sure that the college goes back to what, what it was? Involved, remember, administration is the, it's essentially a, the minister's process mm -hmm. because the administrator must come there, giving instructions on what to f focus on, and regular report backs are given to the, the minister so that should there be any need to tick one or two, then that opportunity would avail itself. Mm -hmm. So that's the extent of the involvement. Even also financial. Uh, you know, resourcing of the, the process. Mm -hmm. Because if you give me work to do, you need to give me the way we thought to be able to achieve that which you, you want me to achieve. So the minister has been fully involved, of course, through delegated authority, mm -hmm. you know, there will be other role players, but all of them get instructions from him. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about the plans that you have as, a, as an institution for those people that actually want to further their studies with, with CJC. What are those plans? Yeah, we, among other achievements, we've been able to, to deal with uh, walk-ins mm -hmm. by ensuring that uh, applications can be done online. Oh, one of the achievements is that we've revamped our website. Oh. User-friendly, lively, mm -hmm. attractive and it appeals to the youth. Mm -hmm. So you just log into www.cjc.edu.za, you then go in. Actually, the applications for the first intake of 2023 mm -hmm. were opened 1st September. They are running as you speak. And well, when are they closing? I, I, I can't off the cuff remember the closing date, but mm -hmm. what I know is that we opened 1st first first. First September, mm -hmm. and on that website that I've, I've just given, I see it appear on the screen, that's where 
uh, viewers can, can, can never look at and then go there, you know. Mm -hmm. I would advise that they make up decisions to apply now before the spaces are taken up. Mm -hmm. Because okay. we wouldn't like to see people, you know, queuing at the gates and saying we need admission mm -hmm. in this program and can end up choosing that which does not appeal, yeah. appeal or suit their, their potential. Mm -hmm. Speaking about um, admissions, what are the, some, of, uh, some of the courses that you offer as an institution? The, 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 the quite varied and very attractive. Mm -hmm. We have engineering in all its disciplines. We have uh, business management. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we have uh, IT. We have music. We have arts and design. At Alex, for example, we have clothing production. Mm -hmm. We have uh, costumology. So th 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 those are the kind of, you know, study directions mm -hmm. that it can enhance the, 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 the chances of, you know, our graduates mm -hmm. creating own jobs instead of just, you know, studying to queue mm -hmm. for a job created by someone. So mm -hmm. th th that's, the, that's the edge that the TVs have over, you know, say you are higher, you are university education. Because they use, it's academic, no practical component. You study, finish, but cannot, in practical terms, mm -hmm. practice what you've learned. But at the TVs, because of the multi-mode kind of teaching, learning, you get your theory and your practical experience, you blend them, then you're good to go. Mm -hmm. So, um, Doc, I want to understand, how many campuses do you have nationally? Because you spoke about a number of them, 10 if I'm not no, mistaken. No, no. I said eight, but then eight. with the closure of uh, oh, okay. Crown Mines, we left with seven. Seven now. now. Yeah. So where are they located in, in, in South Africa? We have a campus in, in, in Alex. It's essentially engineering, and mm -hmm. those are the you know, programs that I alluded to now. Mm -hmm. We have an IT-specific uh, program at Trevor just next to Ellis Park. Ellis Park is one of the big campuses like Alex. It has engineering, it has business, it has all that. But our business hub programs, your business management, your HR, are located here in Park Town. <laughs> and then we have one in Bradford, in... Um, Smith, did you know? Smith Street. Smith Street. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then we have two others in Southwest. One is Riverley. It also has component programs in tourism, and then also have engineering in La Lachte. Mm -hmm. Those are the the campuses that uh, you know make up CJC ultimately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, in closing, Doc, for someone that's interested in joining the CJC family yeah. and get to graduate, like the people that actually graduated today, yeah. how can they go about doing that briefly? Briefly, one, you visit our website, browse through it. Mm -hmm go through campus by campus, and then also they can phone in. They'll find a line there that they can call, phone in, you know, read about this thing, make up your mind, match that with your, your capabilities, mm -hmm. and then there you are. Thank you so much, Doc, for joining us. It was such a pleasure having you in studio. And once again, congratulations to your students that actually wore that gown. I, I know how it feels to be in that moment. Exactly. You must be very proud of yourself at no, this no, no. point. It's also something to enthuse about. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the, the sessions, mm -hmm. those I that imagine. I attended. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Doc. Now, that was the technical advisor to the administrator at Central Johannesburg College talking to us about the incident that took place at their college, how they have been trying to restore it, and the plans they have moving forward. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of So Edit Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to engage with us about the show by simply sending us an email on today at sodotv.co.za. Alternatively, you can contact Contact us on 011-933-3000. From myself and the rest of the team, we will see you on the next news bulletin that's coming right after this. So it's goodbye for now.